In the early part of this century, I'm talking about in the 2005 to 2007 timeframe, there was a lot of talk about so-called green IT. And at that time, there was some organizational friction. Like for example, the line was that the CIO never saw the power bill, so he or she didn't care. Or that the facilities folks, they rarely talked to the IT department. So there was kind of that split brain. And, and then the 07, 08 financial crisis really created an inflection point in a couple of ways. First, it caused organizations to kind of pump the brakes on IT spending and then they took their eye off the sustainability ball. And the second big trend, of course, was the cloud model. You know, it kind of became a benchmark for IT simplicity and automation and efficiency, the ability to dial down and dial up capacity as needed. And the third was by the end of the first decade of the, the 2000s, the technology of virtualization was really hitting its best stride. And then you had innovations like flash storage, which largely eliminated the need for these massive farms of spinning mechanical devices that sucked up a lot of power. <clears throat> and so really these technologies began their march to mainstream adoption. And as we progress through the 2020s, the effect of climate change really come into focus as a critical component of ESG, environmental, social, and governance. Shareholders have come to demand metrics around sustainability. Employees are often choosing employers based on their ESG posture. And most importantly, companies are finding that savings on power, cooling, and footprint, it has a bottom line impact on the income statement. Now you add to that the energy challenges around the world, particularly facing Europe right now, the effects of global inflation, and even more advanced technologies like machine intelligence, and you've got a perfect storm where technology can really provide some relief to organizations. Hello and welcome to the Path to Sustainable IT, made possible by Pure Storage in collaboration with theCUBE. My name is Dave Vellante and I'm one of the hosts of the program along with my colleague, Lisa Martin. Now today, we're going to hear from three leaders on the sustainability topic. First up, Lisa will talk to Nicole Johnson. She's the head of social impact and sustainability at Pure Storage. Nicole will talk about the results from a study of around a thousand sustainability leaders worldwide. And she'll share some metrics from that study. And then next, Lisa will speak to Ajay Singh. He's the chief product officer at Pure Storage. We've have, had him on theCUBE before. And not only will he share some useful stats in the market, I'll also talk about some of the technology innovations that customers can tap to address their energy consumption, not the least of which is AI, which is entering every aspect of our lives, including how we deal with energy consumption. And then we'll bring it back to our Boston studio and go north of Italy with Mattia Bolero of Elmec Informatica, a services provider with deep expertise on the topic of sustainability. We hope you enjoyed the program today. Thanks for watching, let's get started. At Pure Storage, the opportunity for change and our commitment to a sustainable future are a direct reflection of the way we've always operated and the values we live by every day. We are making significant and immediate impact worldwide through our environmental sustainability efforts. The milestones of change can be seen everywhere in everything we do. Pure's evergreen storage architecture delivers two key environmental benefits to customers the reduction of wasted energy, and the reduction of e-waste. Additionally, Pure's implemented a series of product packaging redesigns promoting recycle and reuse in order to reduce waste that will not only benefit our customers, but also the environment. Pure is committed to doing what is right and leading the way with innovation. That has always been the Pure difference making a difference by enabling our customers to drive out energy usage and their data storage systems by up to 80%. Today, more than 97% of pure arrays purchased six years ago are still in service. And tomorrow, our goal for the future is to reduce scope three emissions. 
Pure is committing to further reducing our sold products emissions by 66% per petabyte by 2030. All of this means what we said at the beginning, change that is simple. And that is what it has always been about. Pure has a vision for the future. Today, tomorrow, forever. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this special event, Pure Storage, The Path to Sustainable IT. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. Very pleased to be joined by Nicole Johnson, the Head of Social Impact and Sustainability at Pure Storage. Nicole, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for having me, Lisa. Sustainability is such an important topic to talk about, and I understand that Pure just announced a report today about sustainability. What can you tell me, what nuggets are in this report? Um, well, actually quite a few um, really interesting nuggets, uh, at least for us, and I, I think probably for you and your viewers as well. So um, we actually commissioned about a thousand sustainability leaders across the globe to understand, you know, what are their sustainability goals? What are they working on? Um, and what are the impacts of buying decisions, um, particularly around infrastructure when it comes to sustainable goals? Um, I think one of the things that was really interesting for us was the fact that around the world, we did not see a significant variation in terms of um, sustainability being a top priority. Uh, you've, I'm sure you've heard uh, about the energy crisis that's happening across uh, Europe. And so, you know, there was some thought that perhaps that might play into um, EMEA being a larger, you know, having sustainability goals that were more significant, but we actually did not find that. We found sustainability to be um, really important no matter where uh, the uh, respondents were located. So very interesting. Um, at Pure, sustainability is really at the heart of what we do um, and has been since our founding. Um, it's interesting because we set out to make storage really simple but it turns out really simple is also really sustainable. Um, and the products and services that we bring to our customers have really powerful outcomes when it comes to decreasing uh, their, their own carbon footprints. Um, and so, you know, we often hear from customers uh, that we've actually really helped them to significantly improve their storage performance, but also... Uh, allow them to save on space, power, and cooling costs um, and and their footprint. So really significant findings. Um, one example of that is a company called Cengage, which is a global education technology company. Um, they recently shared with us that they have actually been able to reduce their overall storage footprint by 80%. Uh, wow. Well, doubling to tripling the performance of their storage system. So wow. um, it's really critical for, um, for companies who are thinking about their sustainability goals to consider the dynamic between their sustainability program and um, their IT teams who are making these buying decisions. Right. Those two teams need to be really inextricably linked these days. You talked about the fact that there was really... Um, consistency across the regions in terms of sustainability being a high priority for organizations. You had a great customer story that you shared that showed significant impact can be made there by bringing the sustainability both together with IT. But I'm wondering why are we seeing that so much of the vendor selection process still isn't revolving around sustainability or it's overlooked? What are some of the things that you're seeing despite so many people saying sustainability, huge priority? Mm -hmm. um, well, in this survey, the most commonly cited challenge was really around the fact that there was a lack of management buy-in. 40% um, of respondents told us this was the top roadblock. Um, so getting, I think, getting that out of the way. Um, and then we also just heard that sustainability um, teams were not brought into tech purchasing processes until after it's already rolling, right? So they're not even looped in. Um, and that being said, you know, we know that IT has been identified as one of the key 
um, departments to supporting a company's sustainability goals. So um, we we really want to ensure that these two teams are talking more to each other. Um, when we look even closer at the data from the respondents, um, we see some really positive correlations. Uh, we see that 65% of respondents reported that they're on track to meet their sustainability goals. And that IT, of those 65%, IT is significantly engaged with reporting data for those sustainability initiatives. Uh, we saw that uh, that for those who did report that sustainability is a top priority for vendor selection, uh, they were twice as likely to be on track with their goals and their sustainability directors said that they were getting involved at the beginning of the tech purchasing program or process, I'm sorry, rather than um, towards the end. Um, and so, you know, we know that to curb the impact of climate crisis, we really need to um, embrace sustainability from a cross-functional viewpoint. Definitely has to be cross-functional. So, so strong correlations there in the report that organizations that had closer alignment between the sustainability folks and the IT folks were farther along in their sustainability program development, execution, et cetera. Those, co those correlations, were they a surprise? Um, not entirely. Um, you know, when we look at some of the statistics that come from the, you know, places like the World Economic Forum, uh, they say that digitization generated 4% of uh, greenhouse gas emissions in 2020. So, um, and that, you know, that's now almost three years ago. Uh, digital data only accelerates. Um, and by 2025, we expect that number could be almost double. Um, and so we know that uh, that communication and that correlation um, is going to be really important because data centers are taking up such a huge footprint of uh, when companies are looking at their emissions. Um, and it's, I mean, quite frankly, a really interesting opportunity for IT to be a trailblazer in the sustainability journey. Um, and, you know, perhaps people that are in IT haven't thought about how they can um, make an impact in this area, but there really is some incredible ways to help us work on cutting carbon emissions, um, both from your company's perspective and from the world's perspective, right? Like we are, we're all doing this because it's something that we know we have to do to drive down climate change. So um, I think when you when you think about how to be a trailblazer, how to do things differently, how to differentiate um, your own department, it's a really interesting connection um, that IT and sustainability um, work together. Uh, I would also say, you know, I'll just note that um, of the respondents to the survey we were discussing, um, we do over half of those respondents um, expect to see closer alignment between the organization's IT and sustainability teams as they move forward? And that's really a, a tip the hat to those organizations embracing cultural change. That's always hard to do. But for those two, for sustainability and IT to come together as part of really the overall ethos of an organization, that's huge. And it's great to see the data demonstrating that that those that alignment, that close alignment is really on its way to helping organizations across industries make a big impact. I want to dig in a little bit to peers ESG goals. What can you share with us about that? Absolutely. Um, so as I mentioned, peers kind of at the beginning of our formal ESG journey, but really has been working on the um, on the sustainability front for a long time. Um, I would it's funny as we're as we're doing a lot of this work and and kind of building our own profile around this, we're coming back to some of the things that we have done in the past um, that consumers weren't necessarily interested in then, but um, are now, because the world has changed, becoming more and more um, invested in. So that's exciting. So uh, we did a, a baseline scope one, two, and three analysis um, and discovered, interestingly enough, that 70% of our emissions comes from use of sold products. So our customers um, work uh, running our products in their data centers. So we know that 
we we've made some ambitious goals around our scope one and two emissions, which is our own office, our utilities, you know, those they only account for 6% of our emissions. So we know that to really address the issue of climate change, we need to work on the use of sold products. So we've also made a, a really ambitious commitment to uh, decrease our carbon emissions by 66% per, bed, per petabyte by 2030 in our products. So decreasing our own carbon footprint, but also um, affecting our customers as well. Um, and we've also committed to a science-based target initiative um, and are road mapping how to achieve the ambitious goals set out in the Paris Agreement. That's fantastic. It sounds like you really dialed in on where is the biggest opportunity for us as Pure Storage to make the biggest impact across our organization, across our customers' organizations there. Lofty goals that Pure has set, but knowing what I know about Pure, you guys are probably well on track <laughs> to, to accomplish those goals in record time. I hope so. Talk a little bit about advice that you would give to viewers who might be at the very beginning of their sustainability journey and really wondering what are the core elements besides IT sustainability team alignment that I need to bring into this program to make it actually successful? Yeah. Um, so I think you know, understanding that you don't have to pick between really powerful technology and sustainable technology. Um, there are opportunities to get both, um, and not just in storage, right? In in your entire IT port portfolio. Um, we know that, you know, we're in a place in the world where we have to look at things from the bigger picture. We have to solve new challenges. Um, and we have to approach business a little bit differently. So adopting solutions and services that are environmentally efficient um, can actually help uh, to scale and deliver um, more effective and efficient um, IT solutions over time. So um, I think that that's something that we need to, to really remind ourselves, right? We have to go about business a little bit differently, and that's okay. Um, we also know that data centers utilize an incredible amount of, um, of energy and, um, and carbon. And so everything that we can do to drive that down is going to, um, address the sustainability goals for us individually, as well as again, drive down that climate change. So, um, we we need to get out of the mindset that data centers are um are about reliability or cost um et cetera um and really think about efficiency and carbon footprint when you're making those uh business decisions um i'll also say that you know the earlier that we can get sustainability teams into the conversation the more impactful your business decisions are going to be um, and helping you to guide sustainable decision-making. So shifting sustainability and IT left almost together really shows the, the correlation between those folks getting together in the beginning with intention. The report shows and the successes that peers had demonstrate that that's very impactful for organizations to actually be able to implement even the cultural change that's needed for sustainability programs to be successful. My last question for you goes back to that report. You mentioned in there that the data show a lot of organizations are hampered by management buy-in where sustainability is concerned. How can Pure help its customers navigate around those barriers so that they get that management buy-in and they understand that the value in it for them? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think that for me, um, my advice is always to speak to hearts and minds, right? Um, and help the management to understand, first of all, the impact, right, um, uh, on climate change. So I think that's the kind of hearts piece. On the mind piece, uh, I think it's addressing the sustainability goals that these companies have set for themselves and helping management understand how to, you know, how their IT buying decisions can actually really help them to reach these goals. Um, we also, you know, we always run kind of TCOs for customers to understand what is the actual cost of um, of the equipment. And so, you know, especially if you're in a um, in a location in which energy costs are rising. I mean, I think we're seeing that around the world right now with inflation. Um, 
Better understanding your energy costs can really help your management to um, understand, the again, the bigger picture and what that total cost is going to be. Uh, often we see you know, that maybe the uh, the person who's buying the IT equipment isn't the same person who's purchasing, who's paying the, the electricity bills, right? And so sometimes even those two teams aren't talking and there's a great opportunity there, I think, to just, to just you know, look at it from a more high level lens to better understand what total cost of ownership is. That's a great point. Great advice. Nicole, thank you so much for joining me on the program today, talking about the new report that uh, on sustainability that Pure put out, some really compelling nuggets in there, but really also some great successes that you've already achieved internally on your own ESG goals and what you're helping customers to achieve in terms of driving down their carbon footprint and emissions. We so appreciate your insights and your thoughts. Thank you, Lisa. It's been great speaking with you. Ajay Singh joins me, the Chief Product Officer at Pure Storage. Ajay, it's great to have you back on the program. Great to be back on, Lisa. Good morning. Good morning. And sustainability is such an important topic to talk about. So we're going to really unpack what Pure is doing. We're going to get your viewpoints on what you're seeing. And you're going to leave the audience with some recommendations on how they can get started on their ESG journey. First question, we've been hearing a lot from Pure, Ajay, about the role that technology plays in organizations achieving sustainability goals. What's been the biggest environmental impact associated with with customers achieving that given the massive volumes of data that keep being generated? Absolutely, Lisa. You can imagine that the data is only growing and exploding. Uh, and, 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 and there's a good reason for it. You know, data is the new currency. Some people call it the new oil. Uh, and the opportunity to go process this data, gain insights, is really helping customers drive an edge in the digital transformation. It's going to make a difference between them being on the leaderboard a decade from now when the digital transformation kind of pans out versus, you know, being kind of somebody that, you know, quite missed the boat. So data is super critical. Uh, and, and obviously, as part of that, we see all these big benefits, but it has to be stored. And, and, and that means it's going to consume a lot of resources. Uh, and, and, the, and therefore, data center usage has only accelerated, right? You can imagine the amount of data being generated. Uh, you know, a recent study uh, pointed to roughly by 2025, 175 zettabytes, which where each zettabyte is a billion terabytes. So just think of that size and scale of data. That's huge. Uh, and, and they also say that, uh, you know, pretty soon, today, in fact, in the developed world, um, every person is having an interaction with the data center literally every 18 seconds. So whether it's on Facebook or Twitter or, you know, your email, people are constantly interacting with data. So you can imagine this data is only exploding. It has to be stored and it consumes a lot of energy. In fact, it Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was saying, in fact, uh, you know, there's uh, some studies have shown that data center usage literally consumes one to 2% of global energy consumption. So if there's one place we could really help climate change and, and all those aspects, if you can kind of really, you know, tamp down the data center energy consumption. Sorry, you were saying? I was just going to say, it's it's an incredibly important topic and the the, the stats on data that you provided. And also, I, I like how you talked about, you know, every 18 seconds we're interacting with a data center, whether we know it or not. We think about the long-term implications, the fact that data is growing massively as you shared with the stats that you mentioned. If we think about though, the responsibility that companies have, every company in today's world needs to be a data company, right? And yes. we consumers expect it. We expect that you are going to deliver these relevant uh, personalized experiences, whether we're doing a transaction in our personal lives or in business. But what is the, what uh, requirements do technology companies have to really start building down their carbon footprints? No, absolutely. If you kind of think about it, uh, just to kind of finish up the data story a little bit, the explosion is to the point where, in fact, if you just recently was in the news that Ireland went up and said, oh, sorry, uh, we can't have any more data centers here. We just don't have the power to supply them. And that was big in the news and you know all the hyperscalers are scratching their head. I know they've come around that and figure out a way around it, but it's getting there. Some, some organizations and, and areas, jurisdictions are saying pretty much no data center at all. You know, we're, we just can't do it. Uh, and so 
as you said, so companies like Pure, I mean, our view is that IT has an opportunity here to really do our bit for climate change and be able to you know, drive a sustainable environment. Uh, and, and at Pure, we believe that uh, you know, today's data success really ultimately hinges on energy efficiency. You know, so to, to really be energy efficient means you are going to be successful long-term with data. Because if you think of classic data infrastructures, the legacy infrastructures, you know, we've got disk infrastructures, hybrid infrastructures, flash infrastructures, low-end systems, medium-end systems, high-end systems. So a lot of silos, you know, a lot of inefficiency across the silos because the data doesn't get used across that. In fact, you know, today, a lot of data centers are not really built with kind of the efficiency and environmental mindset. So there's a big opportunity there. So Ajay, talk to me about some of the steps that Pure is implementing as its chief product officer. would love to get your your thoughts. What steps is it implementing to help Pure's customers become more sustainable? No, absolutely. So essentially, we're all inherently motivated, like Pure and, 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 and everybody else, to solve problems for customers and really forward the status quo, right? You know, innovation. You know, that's what we're all about. And while we're doing that, <clears throat> the challenge is to how do you make technology and the data we feed into it faster, smarter, scalable, obviously, but more importantly, sustainable. But you can do all of that, but if you miss the sustainability bit, you're kind of missing the boat. And I also feel from an ethical perspective, that's really important for us, not only to do all the other things, but also kind of make it sustainable. In fact, Today, 80% of the companies, the companies are realizing this, 80% today are, in fact, report out on sustainability, which is great. Uh, in fact, 80% of leadership at companies, you know, CEOs and senior executives say they've been impacted by some climate change event. You know, whether it's a fire in the place, they had to evacuate or floods or storms or uh, hurricanes, you, you name it, right? Uh, so mitigating the carbon impact can, in fact, today be a competitive advantage for companies because that's where the puck is going and everybody's, uh, you know, uh, is skating, wanting to skate towards the puck and it's good, it's good business too, to be sustainable and and, and meet these, you know, customer requirements. In fact, the, the recent uh, survey that we released today uh, is saying that more and more organizations are kickstarting their sustainability initiatives and many take you know, are, are aiming to make a significant progress against that over the next decade. So that's that's really you know part of the big uh, uh, the release. So our view is that that IT infrastructure, you know, can really make a big push towards greener IT, and not just kind of greenwash it, but actually you know you know make things more uh, greener and 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 really take the the lead in uh, in uh, uh, ESG. And so it's important that organizations can reach alignment with their IT teams and challenge their IT teams to continue to lead, uh, you know, for the organization, the sustainability aspects. I'm curious, Ajay, when you're in customer conversations, are you seeing that it's really the C-suite plus IT coming together? And, and how does Peer help facilitate that? To your point, IT needs to be able to deliver this, but it's it's a board level objective these days. Absolutely. We're seeing increasingly, especially in Europe with the, you know, the war in Ukraine and the energy crisis that, you know, that's, that's, you know, unleashed. Uh, we definitely see it's becoming a bigger and bigger board level objective uh, for, for a lot of companies. And we definitely see customers you know, starting to do that. Uh, so, so in particular, uh, I do want to touch briefly on what steps we are taking as a company, uh, you know, to, to, to make uh, 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 IT sustainable. Uh, and obviously customers are doing all the things we talked about and, and, and we're also helping them become smarter with data. Uh, but the key difference is, you know, we have a big focus on efficiency, which is really optimizing performance per watt with unmatched storage densities. So you can reduce the footprint and dramatically lower the power required. Uh, and and how efficient is that? You know, compared to other all flash systems, we tend to be one fifth. We tend to take one fifth the power compared to other flash systems, and substantially lower compared to spinning disk. Uh, so you can imagine, you know, cutting your if data center consumption is say two percent of global consumption, roughly forty percent of that tends to be storage because of all the spinning disk. So you're at about you know 0.8 percent of global uh, consumption, and if you can cut that by four-fifths, you know, you can already start to make an impact. Uh, so, so we feel we can do that. And also we're 
quite a bit more denser, 10 times more denser. Uh, so imagine one fifth the power, one tenth the density, but then we take it a step further because, okay, you've got the storage system in the data center, but what about the end of life aspect? What about the waste and reclamation? So we also have something called non-disruptive upgrades. We're using our AI technology in Pure One. We can start to sense when a particular part is going to fail. And just before it goes to failure, we actually replace it in a non-disruptive fashion. So customer's data is not impacted. And then we recycle that. So you get a full end-to-end -end life cycle, uh, you know, from all the way from the time you deploy, much lower power, much lower density, but then also at the back end, uh, you know, reduction in e-waste and those kind of things. That's a great point you, that you bring up in terms of the reclamation process. It sounds like Pure does that on its own. The customer doesn't have to be involved in that? That's right. Uh, and uh, we do that. It, it's a part of our uh, uh, evergreen uh, uh, you know, service uh, that we offer. Uh, a lot of customers sign up for the service. And we, in fact, they don't even, we tell them, hey, you know, that part's about to go. We're going to come in. We're going to swap it out. And, and then we actually recycle that part. The power of AI. I love that. What are some of the, the things that companies can do if they're, if they're early in this journey on sustainability? What are some of the specific steps companies can take to get started and maybe accelerate that journey as it's becoming climate change and things are becoming just more and more of a, of a daily topic on the news. No, absolutely. There's a lot of things companies can do. In fact, there are four, four items that we're going to highlight. Uh, the first one is, you know, they can just start by doing a materiality assessment. And a materiality assessment essentially engages all the stakeholders to find out which specific issues are important for the business, right? So you identify your key priorities, that intersect with what the stakeholders want, you know, your different groups from sales, customers, partners, you know, different departments in the organization. And for example, for us, when we conducted our materiality assessment, for us, our product, we felt was the biggest area of focus that could contribute a lot towards, you know, making an impact uh, in, in, in from a sustainability standpoint. So that's number one. I think number two, companies can also think about taking an as-a-service approach. Uh, the beauty of the as-a-service approach is that you are buying uh, your customers are buying outcomes with SLAs. Uh, and, and when you're starting to buy outcomes with SLAs, you can start small and then grow as you consume more. So that way you don't have systems sitting idle waiting for you to consume more, right? And that's the beauty of the as a service approach. Um, and so, for example, for us, you know, we have something called Evergreen One, you know, which is our as a service offer where uh, essentially customers are able to only use and have systems turned on to as much as they're consuming. So, so that reduces the waste associated with underutilized systems, right? That's number two. Number three is also you can optimize your supply chains end-to-end, -end, right? But basically by making sure you're moving, recycling, packaging, and eliminating waste in that thing so you can recycle it back to your suppliers. Uh, and you can also choose a sustainable supplier network that's following sort of good practices, you know, you know, across the globe. Um, and such supply chains that are responsive and diverse can really help you. Also, the business benefit is you can also handle surges in demand. Uh, for example, for us during the uh, pandemic with this global supply chain shortages, you know, whereas most of our competitors, you know, lead times went to 40, 50 weeks. Our lead times were, went from three to six weeks because, you know, we had this sustainable, uh, you know, supply chain. Um, and so all of these things, uh, you know, the three things are important, but the fourth thing I say is more cultural. And, and the cultural thing is, how do you actually begin to have sustainability become a core part of your ethos as a company, you know, across all the departments, you know, and we're at Pure, definitely it's big for us. Uh, you know, you know, uh, around sustainability, starting with the product design, but all other areas as well. So if you follow those four items, those are a great place to start. That's great advice, great recommendations. You talk about the, the, the supply chain, sustainable supply chain optimization. We've been having a lot of conversations with businesses and vendors alike about that and how important it is. You bring up a great point too on supplier diversity. We could have a whole conversation on that. Yes. But I'm also <laughs> glad, Ajay, that you brought up culture. That's huge to for organizations to adopt an ESG strategy and really drive sustainability in their business. It has to become, to your point, part of their ethos. 
It's yes. challenging. Cultural change management is challenging. Although I think with climate change and the things that are so public, it's it's more on, on the top minds of folks. But it's a great point that the organization really as a whole needs to embrace the sustainability mindset so that it as a as an organization lives and breathes that. Yes. My last question for you is advice. So you you outlined the four steps organizations can take. I look how you made that quite simple. Um, what advice would you give organizations who are on that journey to adopting those those um, actions, as you said, as they look to really build and deploy and execute an ESG strategy? No, absolutely. And so obviously, uh, you know, the advice is going to come from, you know, a company like Pure, you know, our background kind of being a supplier of products. Uh, and so, you know, our advice is for companies that have products, usually they tend to be the biggest generator the products that you sell to your customers, especially if they've got hardware components in it, but you know the biggest generator of e-waste and 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 kind of from a sustainability standpoint. So it's really important to have an intentional design approach towards your products with sustainability in mind. So it's not something that's that you kind of handle at the very back end. You design it up front in the product, and so that sustainable design becomes very intentional. So for us, for example doing these non-disruptive upgrades had to be designed up front so that, you know, a, or, you know, one of our repair pers person could go into a customer shop and be able to pull out a card and put in a new card without any change in the customer system, that non-disruptive approach, it has to be designed into the hardware software systems to be able to pull that on. And that intentional design enables you to recover pieces just when they are about to fail and then putting them through a recovery, you know, waste recovery process. So that that's kind of the one thing I would say, that philosophy, uh, again, it comes down to if that is, you know, seeping into the culture, into your core ethos, you will start to do, you know, you know that type of work. Uh, so, so, I mean, it's an important thing, you know, look, this year, you know, with the spike in energy prices, you know, you know gas prices going up, it's super important that all of us, uh, you know, do our bit in there and start to, drive products that are fundamentally sustainable, not just at the initial, you know, install point, but from an end-to-end -end full life cycle standpoint. Absolutely. And I love that you brought up intention. That is everything that Pure's doing is with, with such thought and intention and really for organizations and in any industry to become more sustainable, to develop an ESG strategy, to your point, it all needs to start with intention and, of course, that that cultural adoption. Ajay, it's been so great to have you on the program talking about what Peer is doing to help organizations really navigate that path to sustainable IT. We appreciate your insights and your time. Thank you, Lisa. Pleasure being on board. At Pure Storage, the opportunity for change and our commitment to a sustainable future are a direct reflection of the way we've always operated and the values we live by every day. We are making significant and immediate impact worldwide through our environmental sustainability efforts. The milestones of change can be seen everywhere in everything we do. Pure's evergreen storage architecture delivers two key environmental benefits to customers the reduction of wasted energy, and the reduction of e-waste. Additionally, Pure's implemented a series of product packaging redesigns promoting recycle and reuse in order to reduce waste that will not only benefit our customers, but also the environment. Pure is committed to doing what is right and leading the way with innovation. That has always been the Pure difference making a difference by enabling our customers to drive out energy usage and their data storage systems by up to 80%. Today, more than 97% of Pure Arrays purchased six years ago are still in service. And tomorrow, our goal for the future is to reduce scope three emissions. Pure is committing to further reducing our sold products emissions by 66% per petabyte by 2030. All of this means what we said at the beginning, change that is simple. And that is what it has always been about. Pure has a vision for the future. Today, tomorrow, forever.
We're back talking about the path to sustainable IT. And now we're going to get the perspective from Mattia Bellerio, who is with Elmec Informatica, an IT services firm in the beautiful Lombardy region of Italy, north of Milano. Mattia, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you very much, Dave. Thank you. All right, before we jump in, tell us a little bit more about Elmec Informatica. What's your focus? Talk about your unique value add to customers. Yeah. Uh, so basically, Elmec Informatica is a, a middle company from the north part of Italy and is a, a managed service provider in the IT area. Okay, so the, um, the main uh, focus area of Elmec is uh, rich digital transformation and innovation to our clients uh, with a focus on uh, infrastructure services, workplace services, and also cybersecurity services, okay? And uh, we try to um, follow the path of our clients to the digital transformation and uh, innovation through technology and uh, sustainability. Yeah, obviously very hot topics right now, sustainability, environmental impact, they're growing areas of focus um, among leaders across all industries, uh, particularly acute right now in, in Europe with the, you know, the energy challenges. You've talked about things like sustainable business. What does that mean? What does that term yeah. you know, speak to and, and what can others learn from it? Yeah, um, at, at, at Elmec, our approach to sustainability is uh, uh, grounded in science and, uh, and values and uh, also uh, in customer uh, territory, but also employee centered. Uh, I mean, we conduct uh, regular assessments uh, to understand uh, the most significant um, environment and social issues for our business. Uh, with, uh, with the goal of uh, prioritizing what we do for a sustainability future. Uh, our service delivery methodology, uh, employee care, relationship with the local supplier and local area and institution are a um, major factor for us to, uh, to build a social responsibility strategy. Um, specifically during the past year, we have been particularly focused on uh, define uh, sustainability governance in the company based on uh, stakeholder engagement, defining material issues, uh, establishing quantitative indicators to monitor and setting medium to long term goals. Okay, so you have a lot of data, you can go into a customer, you can do an assessment, you can set a baseline, and then you have other data by which you can compare that and, and understand what's achievable. So what's your vision for a sustainable business, you know, that strategy, uh, you know, how has it affected your business in terms of the evolution? Because this was, hasn't always been as hot a topic as it is today. And, and is it a competitive advantage for you? Yeah, yeah, for, for, for all, uh, intents and purpose, sustainability is uh, a competitive advantage for Elmec. I mean, it, it's so because uh, at a time of profound transformation in the work in the world of work, uh, CSR issues make a company more attractive when uh, searching for new talent to enter in the workforce of our company. Um, in addition, efforts to ensure people's proper work-life balance are a strong retention factor. And uh, uh, regarding our business proposition, uh, Elmex attempts uh, is to meet high standard of sustainability and reliability. Um, our green data center, uh, you say, is a prime example of this approach, as at the same time uh, is the reconditioning activity that is done to give a second life to uh, technology devices that come from back from rental. I mean, uh, our customer inquiries with respect to Elmec sustainability are increasingly frequent and in depth, and uh, which is why we monitor our performance and invest in certification such uh, as uh, uh, EcoVadis or uh, ISO 14001. 
okay? Got it. So in a previous life, I actually did some work with, uh, with, with power companies. And there were two big factors in IT that affected the power consumption. Obviously, virtualization was a big one. If you could consolidate yeah. servers, you know, that was huge. But the other was the advent of flash storage. And that was, all, we used to actually go in with the, the engineers and the power company, put in alligator clips to measure of, of, of an all flash array versus you know, the spinning disk. And it was a big impact. So you know, I want to talk about your, your experience with pure storage. You use uh, flash array uh, and the evergreen architecture. Can you talk about your experience there? Why did you make that decision to select pure storage? How does that help you meet sustainability and oper operational requirements? Uh, do, do those benefits scale as your customers grow? What's your experience been? Yeah, it was basically uh, an easy an easy answer to our uh, to our business needs. Uh, okay, because uh, you said before that uh, um, um, in Elmec we we manage a lot of data. Okay, and uh, in the past uh, we 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 see it, we see that uh, um, the constraints of managing so many many data was very very uh, difficult to manage in terms of uh, uh, power consumption or. Uh, simply for uh, uh, the, the space of storing the data. And uh, uh, when, when Pure came to us and uh, share our um, their products, their vision to the data management uh, journey for Elmec Informatica, it was very easy to choose Pure. Why? Um, with values and uh, numbers, we, we create a business case and uh, we said, we, we see that uh, uh, our power consumption usage uh, was uh, much uh, less more than 90% uh, of previous technology that we used in the past, okay? And so, uh, of course, uh, you have to manage a gradual um, deploy of uh, flash technology storage, uh, but uh, it was uh, a good target. So we have tried to um, monitoring uh, the adoption of uh, flash technology and monitor monitoring also the power consumption and the efficiency that the pure technology uh, bring to our, uh, to our um, IT systems. And uh, uh, of course, uh, the IT systems of our clients. Um, and so this is one, uh, the, the first part, uh, the first good part of our trip with, uh, with Pure. And uh, after that, uh, we uh, approach also the sustainability in long term of choosing Pure technology storage. Uh, you mentioned the evergreen models of uh, Pure. And of course, this was... Uh, uh, um, a game challenge for us because uh, it allows it allow us to uh, extend the life cycle management of our data centers, but also uh, the um, it allows us to improve the um, facility of uh, the facilities of using technology uh, from our technical side. Okay, so we are much more efficient than in the past uh, with the choose of pure storage technologies, okay. Uh, of course, this uh, um, easy, users, easy usage mode, uh, let me say, uh, it allows us to uh, bring this value to, our to all our clients that uh, put their data in our data centers. So you talked about how you've seen uh, a 90% improvement relative to previous technologies. Um, I, I always, I haven't put you on the spot yeah. because I, I, I was on Pure's website and I saw in their ESG report some, com, you know, it was a comparison with a generic competitor. I'm presuming that competitor was not, you know, a 2010 spinning disc system, uh, uh, but, but so I'm curious as to the results that you're seeing with Pure in terms of footprint and power usage, you, you're referencing some of that. We heard some metrics from Nicole and Ajay earlier in the program. Do you think, 
Again, I'm going to put you on the spot. Do you think that Pure's architecture and the way they've applied, whether it's machine intelligence or the evergreen model, et cetera, is more competitive than other platforms that you've seen? Um, yeah, of course, it's more, it's more competitive because basically it allows to service provider to um, do a much more efficient value proposition and offer uh, services that are more, uh, that brings more values to, to the customers. Okay, so the customer is always at the center of a proposition of uh, a service provider and uh, uh, trying to adopt the methodology and uh, also the, um, uh, the value that uh, Pure has inside by design in the technology is, uh, is, is for us very, very important and very, very strategic because, because uh, uh, with uh, like a glass, we can uh, ourselves transfer, try to transfer the values of pure, pure technologies to our service provider client. Okay, Mattia, let's wrap and talk about sort of near term 2023 and then longer term. It looks like sustainability is a topic that's here to stay. Unlike when we were putting alligator clips on storage arrays, trying to help customers get rebates that just didn't have legs. It was too complicated. Now it's a, a topic that everybody's measuring. What's next for Elmec in its sustainability journey? What advice would you might have for sustainability leaders that want to make a meaningful impact on the environment, but also on the bottom line? Okay, uh, so um, sustainability uh, is fortunately a widely spread concept. And uh, our role in, in this uh, great uh, game is to define a strategy aligned with the common and fundamental goals for the future of planet and uh, capable of expressing our inclination and, uh, and uh, particularities. Um, MX sustainability goals in the near future, I, I, say, I can say that are, will be basically three. One, define a sustainability plan. Okay, it's fundamental to define a sustainability plan. Uh, then uh, it's uh, very important to um, monitor uh, the, its emissions and uh, we will calculate our carbon footprint, okay? And uh, least but not least, uh, uh, produce a certifiable and comprehensive sustainability report with respect to the demands of customers, suppliers, and also partners, okay? So I can say that these three targets will be our uh, uh, direction in the, in the future, okay? Yeah, so I mean, pretty straightforward. Make a plan, you got to monitor and measure. You can't improve what you can't measure. So you're going to set a baseline, you're going to report yep. on that, you're going to analyze the data, and you're going to make continuous improvement. Yeah. Mattia, thanks so much for joining us today and sharing uh, your perspectives from the, the northern part of Italy. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for having me aboard. Thank That's you very much. It was really our pleasure. Okay, in a moment, I'm going to be back to wrap up the program and share some resources that could be valuable in your sustainability journey. Keep it right there. <music> sustainability is becoming increasingly important and is hitting more RFPs than ever before as a critical decision point for customers. Environmental benefits are not the only impetus, rather bottom line cost savings are proving that sustainability actually means better business. You can make a strong business case around sustainability and you should. Many more organizations are setting mid and long-term goals for sustainability and putting forth published metrics for shareholders and customers. Whereas early green IT initiatives at the beginning of this century were met with skepticism and somewhat disappointing results, today vendor R&D is driving innovation in system design, semiconductor advancements, automation and machine intelligence that's really beginning to show tangible results, thankfully. Now remember, all these videos are available on demand at thecube.net, so check them out at your convenience. And don't forget to go to siliconangle.com for all the enterprise tech news of the day. 
You also want to check out purestorage.com. There are a ton of resources there. As an aside, Pure is the only company I can recall to allow you to access resources like a Gartner Magic Quadrant without forcing you to fill out a lead gen form. So thank you for that, Pure Storage. I love that there's no squeeze page on that, no friction. It's kind of on brand there for Pure, well done. But to the topic today, sustainability, there's some really good information on the site around ESG, Pure's environmental, social, and governance mission. So there's more in there than just sustainability. You'll see some transparent statistics on things like gender and ethnic diversity. And of course, you'll see that Pure has some work to do there, but kudos for publishing those stats transparently and setting goals so we can track your progress. And there's plenty on the sustainability topic as well, including some competitive benchmarks, which are interesting to look at and may give you some other things to think about. We hope you've enjoyed the path to sustainable IT made possible by Pure Storage, produced with theCUBE, your leader in enterprise and emerging tech coverage.